Welcome back, YouTubers, to our TNA Turning Point 2011 review with us, the British Fist. Ka-ching! Of course, I am Mr. Parkin, wearing another V-neck, showing my lovely chest hair, and this guy sitting next to me wearing a very plain brown shirt. It's NJ. What's up? Not very, but your as a character are not very plain. Very, very colourful character, NJ. That's all I'll say. Subscribe up above, like this video, and comment your thoughts on Turning Point down below. Make sure you contact us in the link in the box below. Yes, but before we go move on to this pay per view, we just want to give our respects to Eddie Guerrero, who of course died six years ago. A great wrestler, a great man, and we both did tribute videos on our channel, which you can check out. But you know. R.I.P. Eddie Guerrero, you're sort of giving us money, Andre. And all I'll say this is, he put on great matches so that we'll always remember. So check our videos for more information. Yes. We'll link them in the good box below. Of course. Um, what a way to open the pay-per-view this week. Yep. <laughs> Eric Young versus Robert E in a meaningless TV title match. Uh, two weeks, three weeks after... Run after he did the after Robbie he did the job to Eric Young and, and one week after he did the job to Ronnie from Jersey Shore he wins the title. <laughs> <laughs> this is typical Russo booking, even though he's not head booker. I really did not like this match. As you've seen in previous videos, Eric Young is one of the ones I really cannot stand. So for him to be in the opening match. I'm glad they just got it out of the way. I'll say this. The, the crowd were into it. We weren't. I just find it funny that Robbie E wins the title for some unknown reason. Um, we move straight on then to the tag team title match. A match which really got no hype. And for me, this was a well-worked tag match. I did enjoy this match. It's just that I think it really, really suffered from the lack of hype they gave it. And I like the fact they took into account that Hernandez injured Jesse Neal. And they had that whole thing going there. But it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't hyped enough. The match it had its good spots, stuff that I could entertain while I was watching. But again, as the match went on, I just really thought I could see what's coming. We're going to have a title retain. Yeah, Mexican America win after Sarita hits Toxin with the belt. Um, I just thought this though. On it's supposed to be Veterans Week or Veterans Day or Veterans Weekend or something. Jesse Neal is the next Army guy. Why don't they make him win? Imagine the crowd pop you would have got from that. That would have been very good. But my question is. Why have the knockouts in the match anyway? Or why it's before match? the knockouts tag uh, of the uh, tag titles, yeah. the knockouts weren't needed. Why not have the uh, why, why not having Ink win? I don't know, but we'll move on to the X Division title match, a three way match. Um, one thing that pissed me off about this was how this rivalry seemed a bit more about the Kid Cash Jeff and Simonson thing, and it kind of and it kind of made me think Austin Aries is a bit of an afterthought. Do you know what I mean? When I was looking at this, I was expecting a one-on-one -on -one match or the triple threat to be more of a all-against-all, yeah. but it starts the whole team and thing. And I don't know, it's just it did concentrate a lot on Jesse Sullivan mm. and uh, Kid Cash. Yeah, the, the match got 30. It got plenty of time. Um, you had the heels working together and beating on Sorensen. You had the odd times when the heels were disagreeing. You know, this is all part of a plan. You know, stage of the plan. Um, and basically, Austin Aries gets the cheap pin on Kid Cash. Um... You know, I, I didn't think it was a badly worked match. I just feel that it just lacks a lot of what it could have given just because of the fact the Hills were beating on them. Even though it told a good story, it kind of didn't help the match too much. Uh, I can't say I was entertained by this match because obviously it did. Every time Kid Cash made the pin, uh, Austin Aries pulled him off and it just kept on flowing horribly. You don't really get to see uh, Austin Aries' full potential in this yeah. match, so I just didn't find that entertaining. I mean, triple threats are bad enough without having like a two-on-one -on -one situation, but you know... Um, we'll move on to, there was an interview backstage with AJ talking about how Rude has been an honourable champion and everything. And I'm just like, well, you've only had three days to hype this. You hype this on the go-home show. At least they've got some interviews going, which can at least add something to their feud, even though it's just really done been done at the last minute. Yeah, I couldn't really get behind this match, but we'll talk more about that later. Yeah, I thought the interview was good, but we'll talk about the match later. Next, we have Christopher Daniels versus Rob Van Dam in a no DQ match. What happened here? Yeah, we'll agree to that. Dan. We'll agree to um, we'll, we'll agree to a standard review. No, 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 nothing. Yeah, that was weird. And um, basically, the match turns into a standard wrestling match via gentleman's agreement. Okay, bit weird. Um, it wasn't a bad match. It got eleven minutes. Um, Van Ravi Lee wins, of course. I kind of expected him to go over here. It's amazing how how he's not gone against any young talent this year at all on pay per views, isn't it? Yeah, but the thing you've got to remember, Dad, is Christopher Daniels just doesn't quit. No, he just doesn't want to fucking quit. He doesn't he? quit, no. So the stuff at the beginning kind of really confused me, and it's kind of like, well, is it an ODQ match? Is it a normal match? I was like, well, you sh this is the first time they're facing off, so maybe you should have made it a normal match and added a gimmick match maybe later on if they're going to continue a rivalry. Well, it was it was going to be a yeah. normal match until the still chair was brought in mm -hmm. and then the um, screwdriver. Yeah. 
the nah, book, just the booking let this match down a little bit. I think, like I said, the performers, it was a good match. It's just that the book, the booking of this kind of let it down, and that it really confused us what was going on. And I don't know. Yeah, again, the whole thing is obviously it's hard for me to get into a match after you've seen Robert Dam's past matches. He doesn't really like to put people over like I <laughs> said. So if we're going to Christopher Daniels, a guy that again I'm not really liking this whole moaning thing, but I was still hoping maybe Christopher Daniels to pick up the win and go off and do something else, but sadly it didn't happen. A match which we were both looking forward to, Crimson versus Matt Morgan. TNA gave us a nice video package hyping up this match. Um what did you think of this this overall match and then we'll move on to the aftermath? Well it weren't Hyped up a lot, no. so going into this match, I was ex liking it because he had two great wrestlers in, but he just wasn't hyped up enough for me to go into it. Yeah. They did kind of make this seem like a big deal on the second week before this pay per view. They didn't hype it enough, in my opinion, but at least it was a decent match that told a good story. They're trying to outdo each other. It showed how Crimson couldn't quite get the win over Matt Morgan, which kind of shows me that they might be making him heel soon. Especially with the aftermath of this segment, which I thought was very good. Well, I did watch this match. I did like it. They were both showing their strength, how they would accept each other's punches for them to show that yeah. I'm stronger than you, I'm stronger than you, I'm stronger than you. Yeah. And you do expect it because Crimson's this guy who wants to prove himself mm. as this strong competitor. Yeah. And Matt Morgan wants to show that he's also just as good as Crimson. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the match ends in a double DQ when they both get the ref pushed out, when they both push the ref down. But then the interesting thing that happens when... Although I don't like the don't like the fact that it didn't finish clean, I think the fact that it didn't finish clean helped the feud help this turn into a decent feud, which could be good and have a better blow off at say of Genesis. So the whole brawling and security stuff to me did a good job of intensifying the feud, and now one of them can turn heel, and it can be a good feud. That's what I was going to say. Obviously, when you see security involved, you know what's coming. The whole attacking each other thing, adding more as well as just their match, it definitely got me thinking. Oh, these two are really going at it. They really want something to happen between them. So I look forward to seeing maybe yeah. a possible feud between the two. Good segment overall, in my opinion. It was a bit. Yeah, but then have Bully Ray and Scott Steiner on the mic. <laughs> what two great mic workers. This is a mark out moment for me. Two of the best shout out shouting mic workers you'll ever see as heels in the same segment together. And we had them in the match next. Bully Ray and Steiner versus Abyss and Anderson. This was kind of thrown together at the last minute, wasn't it? It kind of just seems like they just wanted to stick them on there just for the sake of putting them on a paper. Yeah, that's two things. The one, the mic time together, I really enjoyed. As you know, I'm a Bully Ray fan, so I'm enjoying all the words you've got to say. Steiner had his say, so I enjoyed that. But the match itself, we heard after we did our preview video that Max was thrown and yeah. added on. And again, that's okay, because they need to cut the card, but it was already full as it is. But yeah. Let's see how this match went. This kind of seemed like the kind of match you put on impact, but at least the match got 12 minutes. Um, the fans wanted Steiner, though, didn't they? They were chanting Steiner all the fucking time. I'm like, really? Fucking hell. Steiner's trying his best to get heel heat, but the fans just want to cheer him. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the fans really knew what they were doing, really. But again, it's mainly think that if Mortal do break up, could they turn Steiner face? Yeah. I don't know what could happen there. They did kind of tease it in that interview a little bit, didn't they? But um, who knows? The match, like I said, went 12 minutes. It wasn't a bad match. Abyss wins after Steiner wasn't the legal man. But Abyss comes in, Black Hole slams him, and then, you know, wins. And then the Immortal beatdown happens, and Abyss well, no-sells the table break. Here's what I want to say about this. <laughs> Number one, they're bringing up Abyss's character yeah. to a single wrestler, so it's good that he's the one who actually got the win in this. Mm -hmm. And then the after beat, I really liked it. It reminded me of Kane, what he used to do. So for a best and wants in TNA to do it, it was really good. And then there's the whole, what's the best going to do next yeah. against Immortal? It's like, oh, we've got a monster on our hands. Ah, then That's you see Bully Ray complaining to Bischoff afterwards and Bischoff's like saying to his wife, I've got phone, things on my Yeah, they have things on my mind. It's like, did you not see it? No one gets up like that from a table. You know, that, uh, that was quite funny. But uh, the match itself was, a, was kind of meh. But it was still decent for uh, developing Abyss's character, I guess. It was, um, I, I thought the same. Next, we had a TNA Knockouts title match. Gail Kim versus Velvet Sky. Um, this had a nice video package. It kind of made me look forward to the match a little bit. Kind of just a shame the match happened, really, wasn't it? Yeah, the match was kind of um, up and down. Because yeah. Gail Kim went in there looking strong. And but Velvet had all the offense. <laughs> yeah, and that made Gail Kim a new knockout in TNA. Did look quite strong in such a big match with yeah. her. And Velvet Sky's no big shot herself, not no. really. But then uh, Cameron Jarrett got involved, so it made the match more on Gail Kim's side. Yeah, then Madison Rain all come in into it. So I'm thinking to myself, oh my god, is Vince Russo back as the head booker? Um, basically, Karen Jarrett and with Madison Rain's appearance, Gail Kim wins. Uh, Gail Kim wins, even though she's not 
been really booked cop in this match. Uh, the match wasn't very. It went about six minutes. I expected Gail Kim to carry most of the match. Instead, Moa Sky had most of the offense and new TNA Knockout Champion Gail Kim. This doesn't really surprise me after the amount of strong booking they've given her. But my God, Velvet Velvet Sky's title reign after all that sort of time they've given it to Vampire, it really hasn't meant nothing. Well, the two bad things I'm saying about this is yes, you had Velvet Sky become this champion. Yes, we didn't like it at first, but we thought, oh, she's it now. Let's see what she does with it. Yeah. Goes against Gail Kim, loses it. And the thing is, this match, I weren't into it. Too much it, interference. It was too much to be looked down to. But the thing I like about it is Gail Kim, someone that had a great impact coming into TNA, yeah. goes against the championship, and she wins it, but not in a great way. That shows her as a exactly. dominant de knockout. And it also answers. It also asks the question: Does Gail Kim really need interference to beat someone like Velvet Sky? It looked like she did. Uh, there we go, exactly, yeah. This shouldn't really be the case with someone like Velvet, with someone like Gail Kim going against Velvet Sky, but we will head on to the next match. A match which I was actually kind of looking forward to. I don't know why. I think it's because they give this the most hype. Uh, what probably was the best few, best hype feud coming into Bound for Glory? Uh, yeah, because they did a segment of Bound for Glory. Turning point. Um, Jeff Hardy versus Jeff Jarrett. Um, what the fuck happened here? We had Jeff Hardy coming in and beating Jeff Jarrett in 10 seconds. Then it goes to one more fall after Jeff Jarrett says, I wasn't ready for six minutes. And then Hardy pins Jarrett via, via after a head after a chair shot and pins Jarrett for the third time, and it's like, hang on a minute, what the fuck is with all this book with it, this overbooking bullshit? To be honest, going to the match, we all knew that Jeff Hardy was better than Jeff Jarrett yeah. now. So to be honest, for them to do it three times to prove that to us, it just really wasn't needed. Uh, you should just why didn't they just have him go out there in a match and have Jeff Hardy win clean in one match, which went about ten minutes? It just this all the, the only thing that I can say is. This this makes Jeff Jarrett look like a dick, and um, you can only be glad about that, especially with Jeff Jarrett. Um, but the match was just, it didn't really help the match itself. It was just badly booked. I'm trying to look positive at this, but the thing is, we have three different matches, all different lengths. And to be honest, yes, Jeff Hardy's back now, but I really did not like this match. Again, I can't pick which of the three was my favourite. Jeff Jarrett got embarrassed fucking pin three times in one night. Fucking hell. But what we'll say, at the end of every ma three of those matches, Jeff Jarrett wasn't happy, so I'm, I'm thinking they're going to continue with their feud. I fucking hope tonight. they don't. I fucking hope they don't. Well, um, the way Jeff Jarrett is, he's going to do something. Oh, we know he loves to hog the spotlight. Uh, we get a nice little segment afterwards with Jeff Jarrett, J uh, Jeff Hardy in the back getting acceptance from the locker room. I thought that was quite good and how they'd done that. finally he got one from AJ, who really did not like him coming back and going back to the top. But it's good that AJ shook his hands. Definitely so, it. yes, I agree. Uh, then we get into our main event, which was who, MJ? We had AJ Styles versus Bobby Boo. Yes, for the TNA World Heavyweight title, the match which was announced on the Go Home Show. Um, I personally, I just can't help but feel that Bobby Roode and James Storm should have main evented this pay-per-view. But I didn't feel it was a, I thought it was a decent main event. I liked the interview beforehand with Bobby Roode talking about how he was selfish and how he's killed beer money and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's was, was kind of nice to establish his heel character. Yeah, the the uh the interview before definitely gave you a fear into this match that Bobby Roode was ready to prove that he is the champion. He'll do anything it takes to retain it. Yeah, I thought that gave you a nice feeling going into the match. It did uh, the match went about twenty minutes, so it got a lot of time, which I was glad about. It was kind of stop start kind of through the match, but the match was decent. I thought it was. I expected a little bit better out of these two, but I will say they put on a good main event. Um, the yeah, exactly. That was awesome. That was some good storytelling right there. Um, Roode wins by putting on the tights. So for two straight pay-per-views, we've had a screwy finish, although this time it's kind of understandable as it's kind of enhancing Bobby Roode's character as this heel, you know, this heel gimmick he's now recently adopted from winning on free TV. <laughs> what do you think of the match? The biggest thing I'll say about this match is the length. It could have gone either way. There was times we thought, oh, AJ's looking strong over Bobby yeah. Roode, but Bobby Roode, of course, picked up the win, which I thought it was obvious was going to happen because oh, yeah. to. with Bobby Roode, as big as he is, he needs a long title run. So for him to be AJ going on to maybe face Storm again, I thought it was the right way. Yeah, it was a decent way to sort of hold off a, a, a future Storm Roode match, which I feel has to happen. Something like Genesis or Lockdown or, a, you know, even a Summer Versus or for Glory, I don't know. But it was a decent way, even if the, even if the lack of hype was a bit stupid. And the fact that they had Storm and Rude on free TV was stupid. At least it got, we got a decent main event out of this. Um, I'll give it the thumbs up. And Rude carries on the title run. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next. See how else they're going to hold the feud. I have a feeling they'll have Storm return on impact and do it from there <laughs> next month on Thursday or something. It looks like they'll be like that. All I can say is well to Bobby Rude. Yeah, definitely so. Um, your overall thoughts on the pay-per-view then? I'm going to say the second half from the Crimson Morgan match, that's when it got better for me. The first part of uh, this year I just thought I really don't care these matches are not 
doing yeah. it for me. The second half got a lot better apart from the knockouts and I just thought, meh for that. But the rest of the matches, good time, good length, right winners. I just enjoyed the second half more. Yeah, the, the pay-per-view was kind of meh for me. I, I, you know, I didn't think it was a bad pay-per-view, but like... The booking in the Jeff Hardy Jeff Jarrett, while it was kind of funny, was a bit stupid. The, the knockouts, I'm glad, I'm actually quite glad Gail Kim has won the knockouts championship despite the fact that they've kind of given Velvet a bit of a stupid title reign. Uh, the main event was good. The Crimson Morgan thing can develop into something more interesting. The X Division title match, while while good, had some booking in there again. And the Daniels, I believe, was, had the same problem, even though it was a good match. The tag match was good despite the lack of hype. So there was a lot of things stopping these matches from being a lot better, I thought. But I still thought it was a decent sort of C show, C plus maybe. The main thing about this pay-per-view is that the main thing we had problem was the build. A majority mm. of these matches didn't have enough build for us to actually want the match yeah. as much as we did when it came. And the one that did, the Jeff Hardy, Jeff Jarrett match, kind of just was felt really stupidly booked and it was exactly. It really did like that. <laughs> But overall, I'm going to give it probably a C. Yeah, so Jeff Hardy is now going to be the future of TNA, I imagine, and Jeff Jarrett has been buried. Schleck Daddy will no. be happy. <laughs> but anyway, uh, get, guys, get your comments on this show down in that comment section below. Um, MJ, check us out this video like you usually do with great grace. Thank you very much, Shannon. And thank you very much, people, for watching this video. All I can say now is leave your comments in the comment section below. Leave your good and your bad thoughts. And that has been it for Mr. Parkin and me, MJ. Thank you very much, people, and goodbye.